good evening and welcome to historic Arundel Castle and the grand final of Ultra Quiz 84, where one of our three finalists, Linda Kent, Hattie Ison, or Bruce Newlands, are going to be making a bit of history of their own. We started at Bewley nine weeks, 997 competitors, and 30,000 miles ago. Then, having left that vital case containing the 10,000 pounds in safe hands, we set off for Deauville, then on to Paris, to Bruges, then across to Los Angeles and Hollywood, Disneyland, and then just last week, to Hawaii, reducing the original 1,000 to just three, only one of whom, in less than half an hour from now, can win. And the prize? Well, on Ultra Quiz, there's no washing machine with built-in tumble dryer. The contestants are taking part just for the fun of it. Just for the fun of winning £10,000 in cash, the biggest prize in British television. We're here at the magnificent Arundel Castle, which has stood on this site from before Roman times. From its Barbican towers, you look down on the town, the lovely River Arran, and on a clear day, the sea. Some people even say you can see father, or in one case, father-in-law. Arundel Castle has been under siege three times during its long and remarkable history. Right now, our three finalists are about to lay siege to the Ultra Quiz Grand Prize. So let's go through to the croquet lawn and meet. Well, sorry to interrupt you, Bruce, there. Nearly at the end of Ultra Quiz 84, one of the three people who could win it. Last night, did you train well and carefully? Oh, yes, and yes. yes. And you've, so, been, so you've been in rigorous and, um, training. Oh, absolutely, you? yes. 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 In a sort of SAS type of uh, training camp. You know. um, SOS. Yeah, sort of, uh, SOS is more <laughs> like it. <laughs> I gather your trickiest moment so far when we asked you was, was Belgium, yes? Oh, the shopping spree in the market. Oh, yes, yes, that was... Uh, it was quite easy, shopping in Flemish when you don't speak a word of it, but um, when I put the balloon in my basket and the balloon burst, and I was running round in circles trying to catch the bits... And, well, we've got um, it here. Let's, let, let's take a look at it now. In, three, three... Doesn't speak Flemish. One, two, three... <laughs> and there they go, rocketing off around the square. Bruce has got N Ballon there, Bruce Newlands N Ballon. <laughs> there you are looking superb there with a Walloon balloon. <laughs> Walloon balloon. <laughs> it was a pretty tough decision there for the adjudicators. Did a deflated balloon count, but we decided since you'd bought it. It did, Cap. Thank goodness. Well, we've got a surprise yes. for you right now, if I can just call upon my good friend Mr Rushton here for a moment. Yeah, with some queries. Thank you very I'm much. Who's down the peacocks? Thank you very much. <laughs> Two questions now about the country you picked, right? You picked Belgium, so these are two questions about Belgium. The first two points at stake in part one. The Netherlands, France and Luxembourg are three of the four countries sharing frontiers with Belgium. Which is the fourth? This is a borderline question. <laughs> three of the four countries sharing frontiers with Belgium. Which is the fourth? Denmark. Bad luck. But it's nice to have a mention for plucky little Denmark. <laughs> but in fact, West Germany would have been a better idea on, on balance. And the other question about Belgium, what is the name of the current Belgian monarch? I'll give you the first word. It's king. <laughs> um, Leopold. 
Not bad. Not bad. I'm glad Leopold's not been forgotten, but King Baudouin oh, would have scored more points. <laughs> and so, at this first stage, as we stroll over now to Hattie and Linda, it's Bruce Zero. Linda, if I may interrupt your game for a minute. Love your new shorter hairstyle, by the Thank way. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's smashing. <laughs> well, it's not long to go now to the end of Ultra Quiz. You're really no. in the running for the big prize. That's Have right, you thought yes. what you'd do with it if you win it? Yes, I'd buy computer equipment and set up my own software company. Set up your own company? So yeah, this would right. really be a big step towards yes, doing that? Yes, it would. Because you yeah. found it tough lately, finding a job, haven't that's you? That's right, yes. So, uh, so you've got your plans all set. I have, yes. Well, we asked you in advance what was the most sort of memorable moment in Ultra Quiz so far, and you picked something that happened in the States, right? That's right, yes, the uh, rowing box scene at Universal Studios. Was, we got absolutely drenched. <laughs> all right, well, let's take a look at it in that case. Here it is coming up. You'll see it over there. Not a, not a dry eye in the house there. Anyway. No, well, now, as a follow-up, as we just did with Bruce over, over there, as a PS, the surprise PS is we have two questions for you about uh -huh. the place you picked. And here's the first one. These are both movie questions, because you picked that one, right? Okay. The first one is, who played Ryan's daughter in the film of the same name? Tatum O'Neill? No, it was Sarah Miles, in oh. fact. Sarah Miles. And the second one is, who played Gertrude Lawrence in the 1968 movie Star? No idea. Fair done away. <laughs> Why not? She, yeah. She's a heavenly body. She might have played it. But in fact, it was Julie Andrews. Yeah. So in fact, the situation... I can report to you is very exciting and very close at the moment. <laughs> you are absolutely level with Bruce. Let's oh, see how Hattie does. <laughs> Okay. Brilliant, Hattie. Nice to see you again. Yeah. Uh, is your husband with you today? He is, yes. Fully recovered. He's uh, come to support me yet again. Oh, so that's double good reason for... Because he... You nearly didn't come in the first place because of him, right? Definitely, yes. He was taken ill sort of two days after Bewley and uh, there was really no question of me coming because he was in hospital and very seriously ill. But uh, even though he couldn't talk properly because he had so many tubes coming in and out of him, he managed to give me a, a really good thumbs-up sign and say, please, please go. So very reluctantly I did, but... Uh... And now he's here too, so yes. you'll, you'll have a real celebration. Indeed, yes. Well, so far the most memorable moment we asked everyone, and you picked a moment at uh, Disneyland I did, that sticks yes. in your mind, right? Yes, it was all the animals um, when we were answering the questions that they just kept on performing and uh, acting about and, uh, you know, really obviously enjoying themselves as we were. Warming moment there. Yes, it was lovely. Well, the PS to that is, as we've done just just a moment or two ago with Linda and with Bruce, is we've got two questions for you to start off this round about the subject you happened to pick there. So, in your case, it was at Disneyland, and so these are the two questions. First, what's the name of the tiger in Disney's cartoon version of Rudyard Kipling's Jungle Book? Shere Khan. Correct. And number two, who is the fairy tale character? who lowers her golden tresses from a high tower to act as a ladder. Rapunzel. Amazingly good. Two out of two, my goodness me. You're in the lead, but on to the next game. Of course, the reason that our three finalists have survived this far is that they're such great all-rounders. We've tested their sense of taste and smell, their initiative, as well as their general knowledge. Right now, it's their sense of colour. They've got just 60 seconds to make the most accurate possible rainbow, starting from... 60 seconds to go now, to get that rainbow in the correct order. We have a very, very... They seem to be very, very skilled here.
Now we've got some disagreement mounting now. You saw there we had almost unanimity at the beginning. And now we've got some thinking going on at the moment. 30 seconds, and so you've all completed it, so you don't need the other 30 seconds. And so, do you want to change your mind, Bruce? Yes, he does. Bruce has put Violet in there. Right, anybody can change their mind again. There you can see the situation. Bruce there has a violet, an indigo, and a blue. Linda here has green, blue, indigo, and violet. And Kathy over here has got a different order here. Blue, indigo, violet. They're green in the middle. Let's check it out. Yes, I haven't really... Thank you. Right now. Thank you very much. <laughs> He's a fine fellow, that one, isn't he? <laughs> really fine fellow. Well, the tension's mounting here for our three finalists right now because, of course, only two of them can survive to the second half of this programme and the final from inside the Baron's Hall. And after that last game, after the Rainbow game, two of you, Hattie and Linda, you got it absolutely right. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo and violet. And so you share two points each. Did you remember the mnemonic, that thing? Right Apparently bit. you're supposed to remember Richard, Richard of York. Of York gave battle in vain. Or one of the guys here suggested, roll out your Guinness boys in vats. That's another way. You should have remembered should have that, one. that one. So the situation is two points for each of you, one for Bruce. So the situation now, four for Hattie, two for Linda, one for Bruce, three questions coming up that will decide which two of you go through to the final. And since we're here in historic surroundings, we thought we'd bring back upstairs, downstairs, over there with a sort of Edwardian scene, and all the questions will be inspired by the scene behind. Sometimes they're actual props as well. So the first question goes to you, Bruce. And it's this. Inspired by the horse over there, but uh, the horse won't help you with this, really. Um, <laughs> who did doublet carry to victory in the European three-day event championship in 1971? Who did doublet carry to victory? Lucinda Priapana. Good guess. <laughs> you, you, you guess right, a famous horsewoman. It was actually, uh, you guessed the right way, but the answer was Princess Anne. So, I mean, you might well have guessed that. On to you now, Linda. And we've got a parlour maid over there with a particular item that's used to support a kettle or similar container by the fire. What is it commonly called? No idea. Sorry. The answer is a trivet. A trivet. Hattie, your question. What is the name of the process by which skins or hides are converted into leather? Tanning. Tanning is correct. So the tension mounts. It's Hattie 5, looking safe. Linda 2, Bruce 1. Two rounds to go. What is this particular wooden object there that the parlour maid's holding? What's it called? Is it a thing for making butter? Uh, not as far as no, I not. know. Oh, a spindle. <laughs> a spindle or for <laughs> making butter, not entirely. A wash dolly or peggy stick. <laughs> really? So, but you, if you can make butter with it, it would be a major achievement. Yeah. Uh, over there is our splendid gamekeeper over there. Um, Linda, which game bird is associated with the 12th of August in Britain? The grouse. The grouse is correct. Hattie, on to you. What are these things commonly called? Over there. They look like branding irons. No, the actual, the actual word for them is... Fire dogs. Fire dogs. Oh, you yes, I was saying, sorry. You were about to say mm. it there, weren't you? Well, you're so much in the clear that, that whether you get it or not, we'll share half okay. a point each, all <laughs> right? You. You've got five and a half and I've got a half. You're clearly through. And that leaves now Linda with three points and Bruce with one, which therefore means that one more round can't save Bruce, unfortunately. You can't get two points in the last round, which means, alas and alack, we're going to be parted after Indeed. all this time. It's we're going to have to send you back to Red Hill and or Rygate again. And it's just yeah. tragic for us all, dear Bruce. Never mind. Well, we'll have Linda and Hattie with us for the live final from the Barons Hall in just a moment or two. And Bruce particularly, seeing it's you. <laughs>
Has Willie <laughs> got a surprise for you? Has he got a good way for you to go? <sighs> Off the battlements, perhaps. Oh, that balloon real now. Okay. Well, long, well, long way you've come from Beaulieu, Bruce. And yeah. if that flag's pointing in our direction, you should be back there in about three days. I think. <laughs> good luck aboard this. You ballooned before, then. Good moment for your first time. <laughs> Off they go into the wide blue yonder. If you feel queasy, use your cap. Back in time. Welcome back to part two of the Climactic Ultra Quiz of 84. And at this moment in time, Mr. Rushton and I are five feet, 11 and a half inches tall and 10,000 pounds short. Where, the, where our man Hunt's gone, I've no idea we're live. I, I mean, I've got, I've got three quid here, but the contestants are going to be pretty disappointed with that. I've got an access card. I was scarcely building to exciting climax. Who is going to win the three Please. rather grubby pound <laughs> notes? It's a pathetic ending to a series, isn't it? Yeah, Where is he, man? Where is he? Sorry I'm late, sir. Well, please hurry. I mean, we've only got seconds to go before we're on. And this is all live as well. Well, it looks like the right case. It's the right case. Now, is the money in it? Have you got the keys? Oh, yes, sir. Look at that. Oh, very good. You did it even better than you did nine weeks ago. Oh, failed. Right, let's just... Uh, if it's good, it, it'll always work. Oh, that looks like the real thing it's to me. quite good enough. Good enough for you, sir? Quite good enough. On your way, then. Certainly. Taxi! Not taxi. Into the hall, please. Well, we'll keep our fingers crossed. Why were you late, by the way? Uh, well, have you ever tried visiting two hundred cash dispensers, sir, in uh, two and three quarter hours? Good going, Hunt, my man. God bless you. And you, sir. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, live from the Barons Hall, Arundel Castle, the final round to decide the ten thousand pound winner of Ultra Quiz, nineteen eighty four. And here's our host, David Frost. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, my dear. Push on. Thank you, my dear. Give it a hell, sir. Thank you, my good man. Thank you, my good man. Live right now. Hattie Ison on my left, Linda Kent on my right. In the front row over there, Rod Ison. And right next to him, Linda's parents there, all holding hands together, knowing someone's going to have really good and happy news in just a few minutes. And we'll go straight. We're going to make it a two-tier round. Our only two-tier round to decide who wins the contents of this case. First of all, specialist knowledge, and then general knowledge. Your specialist subjects you've chosen, and I'll turn, first of all, with three questions to you, Linda. OK? Yeah. The first question. 
1972 saw the first all-British European final when Wolverhampton Wanderers lost the UEFA Cup final to another English club. Who was it? Tottenham Hotspur. Correct. For, <laughs> For which football club was Dixie Dean playing when he won his England caps? Everton. Correct. Which is the oldest club in the English Football League? Notts County. Correct. <laughs> Hattie, the, the tension increases. Your subject was pop music from 56 to 76. In 1963, one Liverpool group made history by reaching the top of the British hit parade with each of their first three singles. Who were they? Jerry and the Pacemakers. Correct. <laughs> Which British group who reached number one in the hit parade in the summer of 64 with the song Have I the Right had a female drummer? The Applejacks. Bad luck, the Honeycombs. The honeycombs. And the other one, on Easter Sunday 1960, a great rock and roll singer was killed in a motor accident. Who was it? Eddie Cochran. Correct. <laughs> and so now we come to the general knowledge round. This is 90 seconds, which will now decide. You can see the score. Hattie has two. Linda has three. 90 seconds, as many questions as they can answer in those 90 seconds. And so I know you'll all want to applaud every question, but may I ask you to wait till the end of the 90 seconds because it means everything to our two competitors. And so we begin with you, Hattie, and these are the questions coming your way. As many as possible. If you don't want to answer, just say no idea or don't know. I'll give the answer and we'll carry on, OK? And here we go. Now, 90 seconds, starting from now. In which historic building is Poets' Corner? Westminster Abbey. Correct. Who was the author of the novel War and Peace? Tolstoy. Correct. What is the numerical value of a gross? 144. Correct. Which city is the capital of Afghanistan? Accra. Pardon? Accra. No. Accra. Kabul or Cable. What date is St. Stephen's Day? I don't know. 26th of December. What do the initials RNLI stand for? Royal Naval Lifeboat Institute. I'm afraid National. not. No, I, uh, very nearly, but Royal National was, was vital. I'm sorry. On top of which mountain did the gods of ancient Greek mythology live? Hesperides. Pardon? Hesperides. Mount Olympus, sorry. Who wrote the musical suite The Planets? Holst. Correct. Who was the leader of the British Conservative Party before Edward Heath? Sir Anthony Eden. No, Sir Alec Douglas Hume. In which city are the 1988 Olympic Games due to be held? Seoul. Correct. What is the boiling point of water at sea level in degrees centigrade? 100. Correct. With which invention is Johann Gutenberg associated? Printing is the answer. What was the Christian name of William Wordsworth's sister? Mary. No, Dorothy. Who wrote the play Hay Fever? Noel Coward. Noel Coward is correct. And I gather we're right at the end of our time. Yes? So we have there a total of nine for Hattie Ice. <laughs> and so now... We turn to the questions for Linda, and we know before we hear the sounds at the end of the 90 seconds that Linda's target there to get from three to nine. So six, you will tie. Seven, you will win. This case, which contains, we are told by Securicor, all 10,000 pounds. So here we go, 90 seconds, and uh, you must be nervous because I am, certainly. Yes. Starting from now. In which historic building are the British crown jewels kept? The Tower of London. Correct. Who is generally considered to be the author of the Iliad? Homer. Correct. What is the numerical value of a score? 20. Correct. Which city is the capital of Jordan? Don't know. Amman. What date is St George's Day? April 23rd. Correct. What do the initials HMSO stand for? 
Her Majesty's Stationery Office. Correct. What was the name of the winged horse in ancient Greek mythology? Pegasus. Pegasus is correct. Who composed the Enigma Variations? Don't know, pass. Elgar. Who was the leader of the British Liberal Party after Joe Grimmond? David Steele. No, Jeremy Thorpe. In which city were the 1984 Winter Olympics held? Sarajevo. Correct! <laughs> Congratulations. Rod, come and join us, Rod. Here, let's move round here. Take a look. It's really real. It's really real. It's the start of your new business, right? This is the start of your new business, right? Linda said that she wanted to start a new business, and you can do it. I'd like, you, I'd like you to salute Hattie over there. Hattie Eisen, who's competed so magnificently all along. We'd like to say how delighted we are that Rod is fit and well. Thank you for letting Hattie come with us. And Linda, good luck. I can't think of a better thing. What a good answer to unemployment. Go out there and give them hell. Thank you, and God bless you all from Ultra Quiz 84. Fantastic. <laughs>